In this video, we're learning the essentials about masks in Fusion. How do you draw them? What do they do? When to use one mask versus another? These are important things. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know so much about masks. Let's go. So I have a comp started here in the Fusion page, just so we can play around and talk about some masks. But before we even get into that, let's just do the most basic possible explanation of stuff. Let's get a nice color here. What do we think? I'm thinking like a purple. Yeah. So what is a mask? A mask is a shape that controls the transparency of any node. So pretty much any node you can add a mask to, for instance, this background node has a blue effect mask input. Whatever we connect to that will be considered the mask for our background and will control the transparency of it. And so I could do something like grab one of our masks up here and these little vector line looking things and grab ellipse and drag that down just near my background. And I can take the output of the ellipse and plug that into the blue input of our background and it applies the mask. All right. Then I can click the mask and I can adjust it by itself. And that's going to flow into my background and control the transparency of it. Okay. Anywhere we see these checkerboards, that means it's transparent. Now this mask, if I just take this mask and drag it into the viewer. What this is really making is a black and white image. And it's also making an alpha channel for the image that's pure white and pure black. You can look at the different channels of an image by clicking this little button here. Going down, you can look at red, green, blue, and alpha. Alpha is the transparency channel. And if we switch to the alpha channel here, it looks exactly the same. We have fully opaque, which is white, and fully transparent, which is black. So when we apply a mask to something, we're taking this alpha channel and we're applying it to whatever we connect this to. So if I connect this in, it applies that alpha channel, that transparency to the image that I connected it to. Now, something to note, the mask always resizes to fill whatever image you are masking. So if I had this same ellipse mask and I made a background, let's just make it green. And I were to resize this background by clicking on image, unchecking auto resolution. I was going to make this, you know, 600 by 600, let's say. I have this little square background. And if I were to take the same mask, drag it down here and apply it to our background, look what happens. The edges of the mask are stretched to meet the edges of my image and it just doesn't really do the same thing. And I can have the same mask that's 3840 by 2160 masking this background and also this background. And it's going to stretch the mask differently based on the size of my background, whatever it's being applied to. You can also select the mask and go over to image in the mask and change its output size that way. So if I were to uncheck use frame format and do something like 600 by 600, that's going to make my mask itself 600 by 600, but then it's going to stretch to basically look the same on my background and the same here. <laughs> so that's something to be aware of. Sometimes what happens is if you mask something that's a different size than something else, then your mask will end up at a different place. And so really the best thing to do is when you wanna mask something, bring it up in the viewer just by itself and then apply a mask directly to it and edit that mask while you're looking at that individual node. Because if you do it separately and then you apply it to a node, it might not really look the way that you want it to. It might look too stretched or not stretched enough or whatever. A little easier to see if this is just a perfect circle. You can see because this is sized weird, it's kind of, it's, it's doing some weird stuff. It's not uh, predictable when you're kind of resizing masks. So it's always best just to connect your mask to whatever you're actually going to mask and work with it directly on that image. The other thing you can do with masks, let's just reset this, is that you can combine masks. So I could take, let's say a square and I can plug the square into the ellipse like that. Sorry, I said square, I meant a rectangle. Okay. Because you can, you can have a rectangle or a square. A rectangle is not always a square, but a square is always a rectangle. So How about that basic shape stuff. But by default, if you run a mask into a mask, it's not going to mask that mask. It's going to combine these two masks together. Okay. So it's just putting these shapes together and you can make kind of a hybrid shape. You can control how the shapes interact with each other in this second mask, the one that you connect it to. You can go over here where it says paint mode. Paint mode by default is merge, which just means it's going to put these together. But there are a bunch of different options here. Add is going to be the same thing. But if we do subtract, we're going to subtract this second one from the first one. We do subtract invert and that's going to subtract everything outside of the circle. And there's all kinds of different ways that you can do this. You can do just where they intersect, all kinds of crazy stuff. Most of the time you just use merge or subtract, but that's kind of how you combine masks. Now, masking a background is a great way to make a nice 2D shape, you know, draw things. You can use something like a polygon mask and connect that, and then you can draw with the pen tool and draw custom shapes, that kind of thing. And that's how I draw probably most just kind of like 2D vector looking shapes. But masks aren't just good for that. Masks are really good for visual effects. Working with masks can be pretty tricky. 
And this kind of video goes along perfectly with my essential tips for fusion in the fusion survival guide. That's a free video course. There's a link right here or in the description. We go over the need to know stuff, the major tips that will make your fusion workflow so much easier. It's my gift to you. Check it out there. Let's get back to it. So here we have this comp of just some text over our drone shot. And let's say we want to put this text behind this little church steeple thing. What we can do is draw a mask and connect it to our merge. So I can take something like this, say mask and connect it to our merge like this. And and that text will disappear. A lot of the time when you're drawing a mask, if you want to see what you're masking, you could just turn off the mask here in the inspector and you can still see what you're masking. And then you can, you know, draw a shape or whatever you want to do and turn it back on and you can see where it's showing up. For this particular instance, I don't really need to see what I'm masking. So I can just leave that on because I'm more interested in putting something behind this you know, steeple thing. And so I can draw a rough mask around this steeple like this. We'll just kind of isolate this part. And here it's limiting the text to just be inside of that mask because we're masking the merge. And the merge has one job and that's to put the foreground over the background. And our foreground is this text. So we're only putting the text over inside of that mask. But I can go to this merge and go to settings and select apply mask inverted. And I can put it everywhere except inside the mask. Then I can refine this mask, you know, I can soften it and make Make it look a little bit more realistic. I'll just push up the soft edge a touch. And now we have this roughly behind that church steeple and that works. That's cool. But we have a problem when we play this back. Actually, it works pretty well for a little bit. But when we play this back, that steeple moves and the mask doesn't. And so we have this weird kind of offset thing happening. And so in that case, we can animate our mask if we just select our mask, by default, all masks are animated. And so here where it says right click for shape animation, there's this little red diamond. That means that it's going to animate and there's a keyframe right here wherever I started drawing. And I can move to another frame and I could select whatever I want to move and I can move it around and I can make some adjustments here. And my mask is going to animate in between these two points. It's going to kind of change that shape. Now you can already see the problem here. <laughs> you can already see how miserable this is going to be to get this trade tracing just right every frame. It's going to take a lot of work. This, my friends, is called rotoscoping. It's animating the mask over time so that you can mask things, put things behind other things that, you know, you don't have layers for, right? I don't have a separate layer for this church. It's all just in one shot, right? So you kind of have to trace around things to isolate them and make them into different layers, which isn't that much work if it's a still, but if it's moving, well, things are moving <laughs> and you have to adjust things, right? Oh boy. And it just is as fun as as it looks. <laughs> some people like rotoscoping and those people are insane, but you know, some people like to turn on a podcast and just mindlessly rotoscope and work on something for three hours just so they can put something behind something. And if that's you, well, God bless you. <laughs> God bless you, sir. And there's a whole bunch of techniques on that. Let me know if you'd like to see some super detailed roto techniques. We can get into that. It could be fun for its own video, but as part of a video, it's probably a little too much to go over. But long story short, you can do some fancy roto techniques. And I have some roto that I made, which is a a relatively well done rotoscope of our steeple here. And I can plug that. And once you do a good job, then, you know, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. And you can put that text behind things like that. Now, at this point, you're probably like, why are you going through all of that when you could just use Magic Mask? <sighs> Magic Mask is really good for some things, and it certainly saves a ton of time. In fact, I'll just make a new Magic Mask here and connect this up, bring this in here, and I'll go ahead and select our church here, and we'll get a nice selection. And yes, that is a lot quicker than tracing that myself. Oh my goodness. And when we track it, it does a pretty good job. And now we have this rotoscoped, which is nice. But a couple of things is there are little problems. The edges are kind of flickery. It's not perfect, okay? Which my Roto is not perfect either. If I connect this in, it might be pretty decent. Make this matte and maybe blur it just a touch, road dilate, that kind of thing. And you know what? It might be just fine for our shot. But it's hard to ignore that there is a little bit of stuff messed up here, okay? Magic Mask isn't perfect. And look, we have like these kind of things, which we could go through and refine probably, but you know, you still get these kind of artifacts on Magic Mask. And this is honestly a pretty decent result for Magic Mask. Sometimes, like when I was playing around earlier, you'll do something like, want to mask this tower and it just looks really bad. <laughs> 
<laughs> it looks not not so great. Like, look at that. That kind of sucks. You're not going to fly with that. And so even though Magic Mask is amazing, and I use it a lot, I use it for so much stuff, it does have limits. And sometimes when you need to have a really nice roto, Magic Mask doesn't actually do the very best job. And it's actually a lot better and easier and probably faster to go through and roto it yourself, especially for something simple like this building moving. You know, this isn't somebody kick flipping on a skateboard. It's just kind of a squarish building for, you know, people moving and stuff like that. Magic Mask probably is a better solution. It'll probably give you a lot faster, better solution than rotoing yourself. But look at those things versus this roto that I made. But again, you know, it's not perfect, but dang, like it has a lot better edges than our Magic Mask. By the way, the way I did this was just with a polygon and another polygon and I'm animated each of those and I used tracking to kind of do some of the work for me. Again, if you want a video on that, let me know and we'll make it. But that's pretty much the essentials on how to mask something. Grab one of these masks and connect it to the blue input and you can select whether you want to use the inside or outside of it just like we did here in the merge with this apply mask inverted and you can animate masks you can combine masks and anything with an alpha channel like this cutout or a green screen or anything you can use as a mask just by plugging it into the blue input of whatever you want to mask cool right hey if you're new here my name is Casey and I teach video editors how to use fusion and make amazing visual effects and motion graphics and if you're just getting into fusion don't forget the fusion survival guide that's a free video course it's available right here and then also watch this video okay hey thanks for being around i appreciate that thanks for watching my videos my 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 kids really like food and so it's just so great that you watch and then they get food that's the coolest thank you